Hi friends, in this video, we are going to discuss about single phase induction machine. Let's see about single phase induction machine. Generally, the single phase induction machine stator is similar to three phase induction machine. The stator of the single phase induction machine 100% similar to three phase induction machine and the rotor of single phase induction machine the rotor of single phase induction machine is similar to squirrel cage induction machine is similar to squirrel cage induction machine stator is like a three phase induction machine and rotor is like a three phase squirrel cage induction machine nothing but in this rotor we are using high cross sectional area copper bars in this rotor we are using cross sectional area copper bars there is no any type of winding right right this is about generally our single phase induction machine generally the single phase induction machine the single phase induction machine starting torque is equals to zero the starting torque of the single phase induction machine is zero Sir, why it is zero? Actually, the basic reason is that all polyphase systems produces all polyphase systems produces rotating magnetic field, rotating magnetic field. But single phase system does not produces single phase system does not produces rotating magnetic field. Single phase system does not produce a rotating magnetic field. Actually, this is the reason there is no developing of unidirectional torque. There is no unidirectional torque. If there is no unidirectional torque, the starting torque is zero. It will not run. So, but this can be explained by the single phase induction motor is not a self-starting motor. This can be explained by double revolving theory. This can be explained by double revolving theory. This can be explained by double revolving theory. According to double revolving theory, according to this theory, out of 100% of rotor conductors, out of 100% of rotor conductors, for example, in rotor, I have a, some conductors which are 100% total conductors. Out of this 100% of rotor conductors, 50% of rotor conductors, 50% of rotor conductors carrying positive direction of current, carrying positive direction of current, remaining 50% of conductors carrying, remaining 50% of rotor conductors carrying negative direction of current. Remaining 50% of rotor conductors carry negative direction of current. 50% of conductors carrying positive direction of current. Remaining 50% of conductors carrying negative direction of current. This positive direction of current conductors produces the torque is called as forward torque. And this negative direction of current carrying conductors produce the torque is called as backward torque. This is backward torque. This is forward torque and this is backward torque. So here the torque is two components. One is the forward component, other one is the backward component. What I told you, out of 100% conductors, 50% of conductors carrying positive direction of current. Remaining 50% of conductors carrying negative direction of current. Nothing but some torque developed is forward torque, some torque is backward torque. So here we have a two components. Let's see here. Let's see here. For example, the total torque is T. For example, the total torque is T. The total torque is divided into two components. One is called as forward torque component and another one is called as backward torque component. Forward torque and backward torque. So what happens, sir? So what happened actually? Let's see here. Let's see here. For example, I'm drawing a, for example, I'm drawing a torque characteristics, torque characteristics for single phase induction machine. 
For example, here my rotor speed is equal to zero. For example, here my rotor speed is equal to ns. For example, here I'm taking here minus ns. For example, I'm taking here zero. For example, here I'm taking ns like this. I'm taking and that is equal to zero. And that is equal to ns. And that is equal to minus ns. Due to forward direction of conductors, some torque produces, which is called as forward torque. This is called as forward torque. And due to remaining 50% of conductors, backward torque will produce us, right? So the backward torque produced by the machine, this is the backward torque. This is the forward torque and this is the backward torque. This is due to first 50% of conductors. This is due to next 50% of conductors, which is called as forward torque and backward torque. Once observe here, once observe here at the starting condition, when NR is equal to zero, my magnitude of forward torque is exactly equal to magnitude of backward torque. The magnitude of forward torque is exactly equal to the magnitude of backward torque. Nothing but the magnitude of forward torque is exactly equal to magnitude of backward torque. For example, this is 10 Newton meters. This is minus 10 Newton meters. For example, this is 100 Newton meters. This is minus 100 Newton meters. Then what is the sum of these two? These two gets cancelled out. Yes or no? Plus 100, minus 100, zero. For example, if I draw a resultant torque T, the resultant of these two, the torque is like this, the torque is like this. This is my resultant torque of the single phase induction machine. The resultant torque of the single phase induction machine is like this. The resultant torque of the single phase induction machine is like this. See here, the resultant torque is zero at the time of starting. The resultant torque is zero at the time of starting. Why it is zero? The magnitude of backward torque is exactly equal to magnitude of forward torque. That's why at starting condition, the torque is zero. At starting condition, the torque is zero. That's why the starting torque of the machine is zero. That's why single phase induction motor is not a self-starting motor. Single phase induction motor is not a self-starting motor because here at starting the torque is zero. But you have to remember that we have a good running torque. We have a good running torque, but we don't have a starting torque. The starting torque is zero, but I have a good running torque, sir. There is no any problem at running condition. But at starting condition, my torque is zero. That's why the single phase induction motor is not a self-starting motor. The single phase induction motor is not a self-starting motor. This is explained by this is explained by double revolving theory. This is explained by double revolving theory. Right? According to this theory, we have a one equivalent circuit also. The equivalent circuit of single phase induction machine. Let's see the equivalent circuit of the single phase induction machine. Let's see the equivalent circuit of the single phase induction machine. Let's see equivalent circuit of the equivalent circuit of equivalent circuit of single phase induction machine. Equal circuit of single phase induction machine. How it will be? Generally, here the R1 and X1, R1 and X1, and next one, and next one, here, here. This is my X0. This is actually R2 dash. This is actually X2 dash. But I told you in rotor, 50% of conductors carrying positive direction of current. 
remaining 50% of conductors carrying negative direction of current nothing but in rotor there is a two parts right for example this is first part and second part also is there second part also is there and second part also is there this is my second part this is my second part now this is x naught by 2 and this is x naught by 2 we have a two parts right this is r2 dash by 2 and this is r2 dash by 2 this is x2 dash by 2 and this is also x2 dash by 2 x2 dash by 2 this is the forward torque components this is the which produces the forward torque this is the backward torque parameters which produces the backward torque this produces the forward induced gmf this produces the backward induced gmf and generally here the current is taken as i2 dash here the current is taken as i2 dash this is my equivalent circuit of the single phase induction machine equivalent circuit of the single phase induction machine my equivalent circuit of the single phase induction machine now they are asking competitive questions what is the magnitude of the forward torque how much it will produce us what is the magnitude of the backward torque how much it produces how much it produces the forward torque and the backward torque generally i already told you the torque equation for three phase induction machine right tell me once what is the torque equation for single for three phase induction machine torque equation for three phase induction machine is 3 into 3 into i2 dash square into i2 dash square into r2 dash by omega into s this is the torque equation for three phase induction machine three phase induction machine torque equation but now i want torque equation for single phase induction machine that's why one in two there is no three and next i2 dash square into okay i2 dash gobbity i2 dash due to due to i2 dash i2 dash square i2 dash square into r2 dash by actually here forward torque r2 dash by 2 r2 dash by 2 i2 dash square into r2 dash by 2 into omega into s yes. this is forward torque same sir similar similar to three phase induction now can you tell me what is the backward torque magnitude same i2 dash square into i2 dash square into r2 dash by r2 dash by 2 into r2 dash by 2 into omega into omega into but this is backward torque right backward torque nothing but the backward slip is 2 minus s the backward slip is 2 minus s so the backward torque is equals to i2 dash square into r2 dash by omega into 2 into 2 minus s omega into 2 into 2 minus s this is the backward torque and this is the forward torque these are the magnitude of torques and this is the three phase induction machine torque three phase induction machine torque right got it this is very important sir they are asking in many competitive exam once they already asked what is the effective resistance in single phase induction machine for backward branch for backward branch the effective resistance what is the value r2 dash by 2 into 2 minus s the effective resistance for backward branch r2 dash by 2 into 2 minus s what is the effective resistance for forward branch r2 dash by 2s r2 dash by 2s forward branch r2 dash by 2 into 2 minus s backward branch 
So this is what the single phase induction machine, very basics. Okay, the equivalent circuit and forward torque and backward torque and torque equation or torque characteristics. This is about simply. Right. Now, now I am taking on the induction motor characteristics. Now I am taking on the induction motor characteristics. Let's see, induction motor characteristics. See here, I am redrawing this. I am redrawing this. This is my NR is equals to zero. And this is my NR is exactly equals to NS. What is the starting torque actually? Zero. The starting torque is zero when NR is equals to NS. The torque characteristics are also zero. NR equals zero, the torque is zero. NR is equal to NS, the torque is zero. This is my torque characteristics for single phase induction motor. Single phase induction motor torque characteristics. Single phase induction motor torque characteristics. So I know the starting torque is equals to zero. Starting torque is equals to zero. Now, how we can start the single phase induction motor? How we can start the single phase induction motor? If it is single phase, it won't start. But according to cross field theory, according to cross field theory, we can start the single phase induction motor. What is cross field theory? According to this theory, according to cross field theory, if the single phase split into two phases, if the single phase split into two phases, nothing but it is a two phase. Polyphase. phase. When the single phase split into two phases, nothing but two phase, nothing but polyphase, it produces a rotating magnetic field. Then the machine will start. So, how we can split the single phase into two phases? How we can split the single phase into two phases? How we can split? By adding extra winding, which is in parallel to the actual winding. What I told you? By adding an auxiliary winding, which is parallel to the main winding, we can start the single phase induction motor. That is called as split to phase induction motor. That is called as split to phase induction motor. When the single phase induction motor is not a self starting motor, that's why I am adding an extra winding which is called as auxiliary winding, which is 90 degrees to the main winding. Then the single phase split it into two phases. Then the machine will start rotation. This is called as cross field theory cross field theory let's see how it will be okay next let's see let's see generally generally this is my single phase induction machine this is my rotor this is my rotor and this is my main winding this is my main winding main winding nothing but state or winding and generally this is my rotor and this is my main winding current IM and where we are giving the single phase AC supply. Single phase AC supply. This is generally the single phase induction motor. Single phase induction motor. But generally the starting torque of this motor is zero. That's why we have to split single phase into two phases. How we can split? How we can split? By adding auxiliary winding which is parallel to the main winding. So, by adding auxiliary winding in parallel to the main winding with some switch, with a switch, the switch is called as centrifugal switch. The switch is called as centrifugal switch. This is auxiliary winding. This is auxiliary winding. This is my main winding and this is my auxiliary winding. This is IM main winding current and this is IA auxiliary winding current. Auxiliary winding current and generally this machine is called as split phase induction machine. Split phase induction machine. Split phase induction machine. This is called a split phase induction machine. 
because the single phase is split into two phases. Generally, we know the characteristics of single phase induction machine. The characteristics of single phase induction machine is like that. Here, where nr is equal to zero, here, where nr is equal to ns. This is due to main winding. This is due to main winding when we are using only main winding. But when the single phase split into two phases, when auxiliary winding connected, the starting torque increases, the starting torque increases, the starting torque increases. This is due to, this is due to main winding plus auxiliary winding. This is due to main winding plus auxiliary winding. This is due to only main winding. So, when we are added a auxiliary winding, the starting torque increases. But, this auxiliary winding disconnected by using centrifugal switch. This auxiliary winding disconnected by using centrifugal switch. When my rotor reaches to, when my rotor reaches to 70% of rated speed, 70% of rated speed, when my motor reaches to 70% of rated speed, then this auxiliary winding disconnected by using the centrifugal switch. Sir, why it is disconnected? Why it is disconnected? Nothing but why it is disconnected because of actually we have a good running charge. There is no problem with running condition. But we have a problem with starting condition. That's why the auxiliary winding is enough for starting condition. And we have a good running condition. There is no any problem with running. This is one reason actually. And another reason. And another reason. Let's see here. And another reason. Generally, the auxiliary winding. This is very important. The auxiliary winding having high resistance and low reactance. Auxiliary winding having high resistance and low reactance, sir. If it is included in the circuit, it leads to more copper losses. It leads to more losses, less efficiency. And also heating effect, etc. will take place. Due to a high resistance, losses increases, heat increases, efficiency decreases. That's why this is auxiliary winding disconnected at running condition. That's why it is called as auxiliary winding only. For auxiliary winding, resistance is more, reactance is less. So what about main winding? The main winding, what about main winding? The main winding having less resistance and high reactance. Main winding having less resistance and high reactance. Okay, next. Generally, high resistance nothing but, high resistance nothing but, R is equals to rho L by A. R is equals to rho L by A. High resistance nothing but, high resistance nothing but, less cross-sectional area. High resistance, nothing but less cross-sectional area. Less cross-sectional area. So the auxiliary winding having low area. Less area, less cross-sectional area. And next one, less reactance, nothing but less reactance, nothing but less number of tons. Less number of tons. Less reactance, nothing but less number of tons. Number of tons are less and cross-section area is less. And here, generally we know, generally we know, again, R is equals to rho L by A. R is equals to rho L by A. When the resistance is less, the cross-sectional area is more. Cross-sectional area is more. And reactance is more, nothing but number of tons number of tons also more number of tons also more right number of tons also more now tell me generally the auxiliary winding is a thick winding or thin winding 
it having less number of conductors or more number of conductors like that they will ask you questions so i tell you auxiliary winding is less cross section area less number of turns so thin winding with less number of turns so the auxiliary winding having less number of turns less number of turns less number of turns less number of turns and thin cross sectional area thin cross sectional area thin cross sectional area axillary winding having less number of turns with thin cross sectional area and uh, and uh, main winding having main winding having more number of turns more number of turns and uh, thick uh, more number of turns thick cross sectional area thick cross sectional area or thick winding this is the thick winding this is the thin winding so this is very 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 important the axillary winding and main winding right okay so let's see axillary winding having axillary winding having axillary winding having or a resistance axillary winding resistance and xa reactance okay next main winding having main winding having rm main winding resistance and main winding reactance main winding reactance then can you tell me what is impedance angle of axillary winding the impedance angle of axillary winding is equals to tan inverse of xa by ra and impedance angle of the main winding is equals to tan inverse of xm by rm tan inverse of xm by rm axillary winding having axillary winding resistance and reactance main winding having main winding resistance and reactance theta a impedance angle of axillary winding is equals to tan inverse of xa by ra theta m tan inverse of xm by rm xm by rm okay this is up to now just to see once clearly then go for remaining topic okay next uh, for example this is my supply voltage v the supply voltage v and this is parallel to this one and parallel to this one generally i told you main winding and axillary windings are in parallel in parallel that's why the voltage is same for all for main winding and for axillary winding the voltage is same now the winding flows through the axillary winding is im the current flows through the axillary winding is ia the current flows through the main winding is im tell me im lagging to the voltage or leading to the voltage sir exactly lagging to the voltage only because this is a inductor right right this is lagging to the voltage lagging to the voltage this is my im and this angle is taken as theta m i think you know already theta m is equal to tan inverse of xm by rm that's very good sir now tell me ia lagging to the voltage or leading to the voltage again ia also lagging to the voltage very good now tell me is that ia more lagging to the im or less lagging to the im tell me more lagging to the im or less lagging to the im yeah exactly that is less lagging to the im only why generally theta a is less than theta m why generally the main winding having more reactance which having more reactance that is more lagging which having less reactance that is less lagging so what is my ia this is my ia and this angle is taken as theta a right theta a now in single phase induction machine the torque produced t the torque produced t is directly proportional to phi a phi m the flux of the axillary winding flux of the main winding and uh, sin theta 
or the torque is directly proportional to the current of the auxiliary winding, current of the main winding into sin theta. Because the flux is directly proportional to current. When current flows to the winding, it creates a flux, right? So the torque is directly proportional to phi f, im into sin theta, or ia, im into sin theta. So, the theta is the angle between IA and IM. Theta is the angle between IA and IM. Nothing but, nothing but, generally, IA and IM. IA and IM. The angle between IA and IM is taken as theta. Theta. Can you tell me this theta is equals to? This theta is equals to, this theta is equals to theta m minus theta a. This theta is equals to theta m minus theta a. Now, they ask the question, what is the range of this theta? The range of this theta is nearly 20 to 30 degrees for split phase induction machine. The theta range is around 20 to 30 degrees for split phase induction machine. 20 to 30 degrees only for split phase induction machine. Right? So this is vector diagram and this is torque equations. The torque T is directly proportional to phi m into phi a into sin theta. I a into I m into sin theta. Where theta is the angle between I a and I m. Where theta is the angle between I a and I m. Now this is the theta. Now generally, finally, the torque is directly proportional to sine theta only. If theta increases, if theta increases, sine theta also increases, then, then torque increases. If theta increases, sine theta increases, then torque increases. So generally theta is equals to theta m minus theta a. Nothing but tan inverse of xm by rm minus tan inverse of xa by ra. This is generally the theta of single phase induction machine. This is generally the split phase induction machine. This is what? Split phase induction machine. Split phase induction machine. Split phase induction machine. Right? Once see this one, next go for different types of split phase induction machines. Okay? Let's, we already know the voltage is common for both. And generally, this is my IA, which is called as theta A. And IM, which is more lagging, which is, which is taken as theta M theta m and theta a, the angle between ia and im is taken as theta. Now they are asking questions. They are asking questions. First one, first one. If theta m is greater than theta a, if theta m is greater than theta a, then the machine rotates in which direction? Clockwise or anti-clockwise? Tell me the answer. When theta m greater than theta a, the machine rotates in. The machine rotates in. The machine rotates in clockwise direction. Second question. If theta m is less than theta a, then the machine rotates in. Then the machine rotates in anti-clockwise direction or counter-clockwise direction. Next, third one. If theta m is exactly equals to theta a, then if theta m greater than clockwise, if theta m is less than anti-clockwise, if theta m is exactly equals to theta a, then the machine rotates. Sorry, sir, there is no any rotation. When theta m is equal to theta a, no rotation. No rotation. There is no any type of rotation. This is the questions they are asking. If you learn these three points, when you are going to exam, 
they will ask you a question. They will ask you a question. If Xn by Rm is greater than Xa by Ra, then the rotor rotates in. If Xn by Rm is greater than Xa by Ra, then the rotor rotates in clockwise direction. Because Xn by Rm, can you know of Xn by Rm is nothing but theta m. He, this is the meaning which is equals to theta m is greater than theta a. Yes or no? Right? Now, if, tell me, if the xm by rm is less than xa by ra, if xm by rm is less than xa by ra, then the rotor rotates in, then the rotor rotates in anti-clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise direction. Now they will ask you if Xm by Rm is exactly equals to Xa by Ra, then the rotor rotates. Sorry, when Xm by Rm is equals to Xa by Ra, then there is no rotation. Then there is no rotation. These are the three points very important. Now, again they will ask you different way of question the same question but in different ways how now they will ask you the question now they will ask you the question if if the lm by rm is greater than la by ra then the rotor rotates in the same yes or no if the lm by rm is less than LA by RA, then the rotor rotates in. Or if the LM by RM is exactly equals to LA by RA, then the rotor rotates in. They will ask you like this. If you learn all these points, if you learn all these points, now they will ask you in reverse again. How, how they will ask you now? You know, do you know what is the time constant for RL circuit? Yeah, time constant for RL circuit, L by R. Time constant for RL circuit, L by R, right? Right, this is L by R, right? This can be written as time constant. Yes or no? Yes or no? Let's see, now they will ask you a question. If the time constant of the main winding is greater than time constant of the axillary winding. If the time constant of the main winding is less than time constant of the axillary winding. If the time constant of the main winding, the time constant of the main winding is equals to time constant of the axillary winding, then the rotor rotates in. Then the rotor rotates in. See, this is the one this is the two, this is the three. Here we have a three questions for same questioning. Three way of questioning for same concept. And here we have a actual one, which is very important one, fourth one. First, second, third and fourth, for all the answer is same, which rotates in either clockwise or either anti-clockwise, either no rotation. The answer is same, but they will ask you a question in four ways. The answer is only one clockwise, but the questions are four. If theta m greater than theta a, if x by m, x, xm by rm is greater than xa by r a, L, lm by rm greater than la by r a, and tau m greater than tau a. See how they are asking you questions in competitive exams. Right? This is generally why the rotor rotates in clockwise, anti-clockwise, like that. If the rotor rotates in clockwise, nothing but xm by rm greater than xa by ra. If there is no rotation, nothing but xm by rm is exactly equals to xa by ra. Okay, remember these four points, and generally we know all these. Remember these four points. Right, sir? Next. Generally, this theta value is around 20 to 30, but to get the maximum torque, to get the maximum torque, theta should be 90. 
When theta is equal to 90, we can get maximum torque. Simply, it is at just 20 to 30 degrees. So we have to increase the theta. When theta increases, sine theta increases. When sine theta increases, torque increases. When torque increases, the motor starts with high starting torque. Right. So to increase the torque, what should I do? How we can increase the torque? How we can increase the theta? How we can increase the theta? For example, see, if theta m increases, if theta m increases, theta increases. First method. If theta m increases, theta increases. This is the first method. If theta a decreases, if theta a decreases, then theta increases. If theta a decreases, for example, this i a is coming like this. When this theta is decreases, theta a, then theta increases. This is second method. Like that, the split phase motors are three types. Split phase motors are three types. The split phase motors are split phase motors are three types. Split phase motors are three types. One is the resistor split phase motor. Resistor split phase motor. Another one is the inductor split phase motor. Inductor split phase motor. Another one is the capacitor split phase motor. Split phase motors are three types. Resistor split phase motor, inductor split phase motor, capacitor split phase motor. Generally, these capacitor split phase motors again three types. Capacitor split phase motors again three types. Those are capacitor start induction motor, capacitor run induction motor, Capacitor start induction motor, capacitor run induction motor, and next and last one, capacitor start and capacitor run induction motor. Capacitor start and capacitor run induction motor. Split phase motors are three types, resistance split phase, inductor split phase, capacitor split phase. Capacitor split phase again three types. Capacitor start, capacitor run, capacitor start and capacitor run. Right.